Welcome Dr. Mohammed Abu Zaid. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Abu Zaid, he will be talking about uh, radiography. Are we ready for artificial intelligence? Uh, Dr. Mohammed is assistant professor at University of Sharjah, College of Health Science, Medical Diagnostic Imaging Department. Uh, he introduced the uh, first debate about radiographer role extension or development in UAE. He has an experience of over 13 years in teaching, in addition to eight years of clinical practice. Uh, he published more than 40 articles in prestigious journal in radiography, computed tomography, and radiation dose. He has a good contribution in international conference. Uh, he delivers many training here at the level of the country and even outside the country to develop radiographer knowledge and skills. Uh, welcome, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, please share your screen. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Mohammed. Okay, yes. uh, you can see my screen? Yes. OK. Uh, first of all, thank you, Dr. Oyam. Uh, whatever I achieved, uh, you are a part of it. Uh, and uh, I would like also to welcome everybody um, who attended these seminars, our colleagues, our friends, our graduates and our students. And sorry for uh, keeping you waiting for long, but usually they, uh, they save the desert at the end. Uh, I would like to talk about this artificial intelligence and uh, mainly um, um, my topic is about, are we ready, I'm talking to radiographers, are we ready for the artificial intelligence or no? I will start by just giving some quotes here. Uh, the future is scary and very bad for the people. This some smart, smart people opinion about artificial intelligence. And uh, Elon Musk from Tesla, he said that uh, AI is a demon that uh, is potentially more dangerous than nuclear weapons. Uh, Bill Gates said that I don't understand why some people are not concerned. Stephen said that full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. So from this point, I want to say that my objective for this presentation is to create confusion. Yes, uh, because uh, to put the question at uh, the title of this presentation, are we ready? And if you are waiting for me to answer at the end by yes, we are ready, or yes, we don't, we are not ready. This is not the, the, the situation here. Because someone, he can be very optimistic, uh, and he said that, yes, we are ready. And the other one, he can put the black uh, uh, glasses, and he said that, no, we are not ready. But really, this is, this is a debate that um, uh, someone, uh, according to his area of interest, according to place of work, according to experience, he can see it in different way of uh, views. Uh, Dr. Nick, uh, he's one of the famous people in the uh, scientists in the field of radiography. He explained that there is a very few studies that have looked at artificial intelligence in the context of radiographer's work. And he said that there is a potential to have impact on practice and surface delivery across all modalities. But it seems the role of radiography and radiographer is hardly even side, a side note. He said also, yet without the radiographer acquiring these images, radiologists or algorithms have nothing to interpret. I did a search on uh, SCOBUS. SCOBUS is one of the largest database uh, publishing researches. And uh, we can say this is a good uh, quality of researches. When I search about these three terminologies or two terminologies, radiographer and artificial intelligence, and radiologist and artificial intelligence, I found that we have only 15 uh, results related to the radiographer. And there is 1,250 documents related to the radiologist and artificial intelligence. Now the question is, is this a good thing or bad thing? Again, uh, if you look to the number, you can say, oh, Radiologists having more researches, more articles published regarding the artificial intelligence. Radiographers have only 15 articles. So in terms of numbers, yes, the radiologist and the many things done at the level of the radiologist 
and uh, image interpretation and diagnostic aid and this kind of things. And this kind of research is that mean they add more to the knowledge compared to 15 articles published by uh, radiographers or the, ter the term radiographer is included. Luckily, and the article number five is published by us, University of Sharjah. Uh, we did some assessment of the willingness of radiologists and the radiographers. So again, the radiologists, it's uh, there to accept the integration of artificial intelligence in radiology practice. This, this article or this study is mainly published about, um, uh, it's mainly take care about uh, the samples uh, from United Arab Emirates. We are working in a bigger um, uh, sample uh, from the Africa and the Middle East. And we hope that it will be published also soon. Now, if we link the work of the radiographer with, with artificial intelligence, the radiographer mainly job is obtaining the best image quality, ensuring the patient are comfort and safe. So we need to fit the artificial intelligence mainly in this three terminology, best image quality, comfort and safe. And here we need to ask ourselves a question. Can the artificial intelligence taking our jobs? Or is the radiographer's job at risk? Someone he can say no, because we are the one who is taking the images. We are the one who is doing the image positioning or we are the one who is working on a CT or an ultrasound or an MRI. But I, I want you just to remember some jobs even in the radiology department, which is disappeared uh, due to technology. And even uh, the, the robots now is taking care of many, many uh, jobs inside the healthcare system, like the critical surgeries or elderly care or even disabled patient. And there is some studies published say that in 2014, the robots assist in more than uh, 570,000 surgeries all over the world. So change will happen and the artificial intelligence will have a place in the radiographer work. So we need to think what we are going to do as radiographers. Uh, this thinking it can be at the level of universities, at the level of societies, at the levels of you personally as a radiographer. You should accept this change and you should work to do some changes in your skills, in your knowledge and in your uh, work practice. Uh, because resisting of these changes will not get any benefit. It will not lead to anything in the future. So what we can do, we have a very easy solution. And many of the people, by the way, they are like, or they do this solution. They just bury their head in the sand. And they will say, this is not our business. I have only 10 years or 15 years working in the field. And until I retire, I don't think the artificial intelligence will come and take my job. There are some people who are fighters. They say, no, let's fight the machines. We don't accept artificial intelligence. We don't accept in the future that uh, the robots can do the positioning or can uh, decide which protocol we do in the CT or which uh, protocol we do in MRI. But again, this is, this is not a solution. So what we need to do actually, we need to raise awareness about the artificial intelligence. And uh, who, who should work on this awareness about artificial intelligence? The researchers, the association, the societies, the universities, but the most important one that he should work on the awareness is you as a radiographer. You should work on yourself. Don't wait for the others to give you the solutions. Don't wait for the others to help you to come up with ideas or don't wait for the association, for the societies, for the universities to provide you with the courses and to provide you with training to provide you with ideas about artificial intelligence. So you as a radiographers, you should think carefully and you should play your role in the artificial intelligence. How to success? We need to implement more research into artificial intelligence. And I, I, I believe that the research is the only solution that it can help the radiographer to take place in the future. What, what else we can do? We need to encourage the radiographers to participate in research, to participate in courses, training, and um, education, communication, not, not only at the level of the training that provided by the companies on the softwares or, or the application that they provided, participation and involvement in all activities happening around us. And the most important thing, we should build the confidence. We should 
I usually tell my students that you should love the image that you produce. This image you produce is an art. No one can produce this image. It's, it's like the, you are an artist. You should look, you are looking to the anatomy and the physiology and the pathology, and you produce this image. Without you, nothing can happen. And now who is responsible? Of course, we usually wait for the al mulhim. We usually wait for the someone who should guide us. But again, this is not the solution. We should work all, we should all work together to find out what is the role of the artificial intelligence and how we will uh, integrate the artificial intelligence in our uh, job description in the future. So uh, at the end, um, we should do these three things. Try, try your best to attend uh, conference, to attend seminar, to attend um, training courses, try to read, try to um, uh, study and then tell. And at, at the end, you should be trust your knowledge, your skills, and you become committed to the success. Thank you very much. And uh, if there is any question, I'm happy to answer it. Thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed. Can I say uh, something? Uh, yes, please, Dr. Bashar. So you asking us for any questions to answer, but you didn't answer any question that you put in your presentation. You just put questions and you never answered anything. Yes, doctor, because this is this is the objective of the presentation. <laughs> I need I need just to do something like uh, create con confusion. I need people to start thinking about artificial intelligence. It's not enough just to go to conference and be surprised with, oh, look to the machine, that look to the computer, it's help us to diagnose. Oh, look to the machine, look to the CT scan, it helps us to select the protocol, re reduce the radiation dose, watching the radiation dose, selecting the best signal in the MRI, selecting the protocol. This is not, we are not here just to impress with self with, or uh, be happy with what the machine is doing, no. Uh, we should think that the artificial intelligence will come today, will come tomorrow to our job, to our work, to our knowledge, and we should be ready for that. At this moment, Maybe I can talk about the region. I don't talk about what happened all over the world because I don't have the knowledge about everything happening in the world. But I think now in, in, in our region, the radiographer is not ready yet. We need, we need to talk more. We need to raise the awareness. We need to provide more um, uh, knowledge, more skills related to the artificial intelligence. All right, Dr. Mohammed, if I can, uh, I can say something. Yes. Um, the yes, the issue yes. I the issue I see in uh, um, AI at the moment is that we the people who can really I wrote this in the comment as well that the people who can really train AI system because it's not going to train you know, itself um, they will have to correlate they will have to do, do the blinding of the studies uh, reporting writing by the radiologist and then the AI system and then look at the results whether they match whether there are any discrepancies or not, and then correct those discrepancies through the algorithm development. So we already got the shortage of the radiologists around worldwide. Like I see in UK about 43 radiologists per 100,000, in Greece 113. So very, very limited number of radiologists around the world. Uh, so as a result, the problem is the people who have to train the system are not sufficient. So the best way, is, it will take time, we, we don't need to rush into it because when we rush, we, we make mistakes. And in particular, when we dealing with the people's finances or with their health, these are the two areas which nobody can afford to compromise under any circumstances. In both cases, it hurts. So it will be, the best thing will be role extension. Uh, I believe you've you done this one through the radiographic reporting. And at the same time, keep working on AI. So AI is a long-term goal. But the short term, so let's say within the next 15 to 20 years, we need radiographers reporting. So even some of them are going to retire, they're going to stop, but they can still specialize and they can move ahead and develop further into that one. And we won't know what the future will hold in 15 to 20 years for those people who are reporting as radiographers to share the burden. Actually, let me, let me say something about the role extension, because this topic is really um, it's one of the hot topics, and we think that we should, uh, in, in our area, um, start talking about this role extension. To be honest, we cannot say that the radiographer role extension 
in in, the, in our region can be uh, or they can participate in in, uh, in in image reporting because of of many things not only the the level of education not only the bylaws not only that we don't have a societies or association to organize the job uh, but th there is many factors affecting this role extension in, in image interpretation. But we think about role extension. We, uh, what I mean by we, me, uh, me and the group, we are working together, me and Dr. Awiam, Dr. Ozan, Dr. Bashar. And we have uh, a uh, uh, collaboration with Monash University and with uh, NH, uh, it's in, uh, in Scotland regarding the, the, the image interpretation and role extension. We think that the role extension, it can include many things like radiation safety, like um, uh, image reporting, image commenting. So we need to go in some levels until we reach the top, which is uh, artificial intelligence. If you think that uh, in, in your area that there is a, a shortage of radiologists, I want to tell you there is one country in Africa, uh, it has a population around 100 million uh, population and they have 13 radiologists. So imagine, uh, imagine the short in here. So you cannot, even, even if in terms of numbers, you cannot compare the numbers here. Um, we need to work a lot. We need to raise awareness. We need to improve the level of the radiographers. But at the same time, we need to look to the uh, artificial intelligence in education. And this is what, what Dr. Bashar mentioned at the beginning, that we need to integrate the artificial intelligence in our curriculums so we can come step by step to the the end, uh, which is maybe the radiographer can participate in image interpretation of musculoskeletal or CT brain or some uh, special procedures. So uh, uh, I think they do in ultrasound, they, they have the reporting, they do themselves. Yes. They do, especially the MSK ultrasound, they do the report and uh, general gyne, all, all kinds of ultrasound, they do the scan and the report, the radiographer. Yeah, in, in the ultrasound, yes. they, they, this is autonomous, uh, um, you know, the body. So as a result, the, the um, sonographers have to be ready to report. Otherwise, they won't be going to the, let's say, for the like of like the specialist people. Um, they will have to rely on the other people. And then what's the point of having a sonographer? And sonography is not like where you can save the images and do something. It's very dynamic. You have to report as you go along Operator. in a way. Yeah. So it's very operator dependent. So you cannot rely on the images itself. No. Yeah. But still in USA, uh, it's still the, the radiographer, sonographer, they do the image and the radiologist report, which I, I think it's not sense because you cannot report someone else's uh, image. Yeah, the, the name, the name in, U, in, in USA, they, they name it as sonologist and they allow even the nurses and um, some yeah. other uh, uh, healthcare or allied healthcare specialties to do to participate in the in, in, in this term of collecting the image from the patient and then they send it to the radiologist for reporting. And even in UAE, the the, the sonographer's role is just I, I don't want to say recently, but yes, recently the Minister of Health in uh, in DHA in had the role of sonographers start to be recognized and they start to be. Uh, well, well um, um, known, but before, uh, no, the, the, there is no sonographers even in, in, in the big hospitals. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, just I'm reading here in the chat area, in the chat box, and I see Dr. Fiona has a question. Uh, digital imaging increased workload for radiographers. AI will increase it even more. Uh, so if radiographers are reporting, the question is, this will be at the expense of the patient care? Uh, I, don't, I don't think, Fiona, it will be uh, in the expense of the patient care. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, did you hear me? Yes, yes, I hear you. But again, yeah. um, the patient care uh, the radiographer role in the patient care uh, for it's it's not in, in independent. So the nurse is participating in the patient care, the physician participation participated, uh, the even the medical physicist participated. So with artificial intelligence, uh, I think it will 
uh, it will reduce, uh, yeah, if, if we talk about radiation dose, artificial intelligence, it will help to reduce the radiation dose. If we talk about uh, uh, the help in uh, protocol, selecting the protocol in CT or in MRI, yes, it will improve the, 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 the patient care. Digital imaging now, uh, for example, the old conventional radiography that we studied before 20 years, now most of these projections and most of these positions are not used right now because of the technology, because of the CT, because of MRI. So this is our all benefit for the patient. But again, we need to increase the awareness. We need to increase the knowledge and skills of the radiographers to know what's going on. It's not enough just to click the, pot, uh, the mouse or press the button. I think, I think if I can just make a comment as well. Um, Please. I think a lot of these questions need a, a legal and ethical framework so that people can discuss them without the pressures of uh, financial profit and gains. Uh, because at the moment, again, as I can see it, it's all coming from, I wouldn't say the wrong direction, but uh, it's, it's coming from the manufacturers who are obliged to, uh, you know, achieve certain uh, gains or objectives for their uh, uh, companies. I think at some stages these may actually conflict with the uh, objectives of other parties. Thank you very much, Dr. Bashar. Uh, thank you very much for uh, all participants and thank you for uh, Dr. Bashar, Dr. Ozan, uh, Dr. Nasia, Dr. Muna, and Dr. Mohammed for the nice presentation. Uh, I would like to uh, call Dr. Bashar for the closing of this interesting webinar. Thank you all. Um, Doctor. Thank you. I, I actually, I'm trying to... Uh share a slide that I was busy writing now while you were discussing. If I can just uh, share it with you. Uh, okay. So uh, again, thank you very much for Dr. Wiam for uh, moderating this session. Thank you for Dr. Mohammed for really uh, starting up the whole uh, program. And thank you for all the speakers, uh, but more thank you for all the uh, participants. I think <laughs> uh, for me, again, uh, one good achievement is to start and end uh, on time. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very important for, especially when, when we have so many students uh, attending this uh, session. Um, maybe because of my age, I attended many, um, webinars and conferences in this part of the world. And uh, this has been very uh, well organized. So again, thank you for the uh, organizers, really. Um, just a bit of uh, numbers. So I looked at the Excel sheet that Dr. Mohammed sent me. We have people from uh, 19 countries. Uh, those who registered were 182. And those, the largest number at any time was 153. So this is really a fantastic achievement, really fantastic achievement. Uh, thank you for all those who, who participated. Um, uh, I saw so many uh, students that I could recognize their names, but I'm sure Dr. Mohammed and Dr. Wiam uh, also recognized uh, former students uh, who, who were there. Uh, again, I hope we were able to really uh, introduce an element uh, that was outside the curriculum and maybe we shed some light on that on it and hopefully they can pick it up in the uh, future uh, I, I, I think one way to uh, address so many issues that we talked about today would be through research uh, projects uh, very simple, they don't have to be complicated, long or linked to grades or courses or anything like that. But uh, I, wanna, I wanna finish with this because, so, so 
I can give an example about uh, some important topics that we talk about in our courses. For example, higher resolution images that actually create larger data sets and also uh, more advanced clinical applications that also create more data sets, image data sets, and they require more personnel, they require longer time to process and maybe sophisticated software or knowledge base to process. So all of these are challenges, but they also create or lead to uh, opportunities in the application of artificial intelligence to really uh, analyze them and look at them. And at the end, hopefully create better diagnosis. So again, uh, hopefully what we do in our courses and teaching can really lead to some more applications of these artificial intelligence. And again, I, I stress, they don't have to be very complicated. So hopefully in the near future, we can all help each other to maybe start talking about small projects that uh, tackle some of our routine issues using artificial intelligence. I don't want to take more time because it's already 10 minutes, but really thank you very much for all the people who attended and thank you very much again uh, for all the presenters and you know the organizers really. That's, that's all I want to say. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much all. Thank you. Thank you. And just I want to announce the Torah we am, if you allow me that we are going to send a certificate within the next seven days. Allow us uh, seven days to email you the certificate. And please make sure that you fill the, the, the Google form, the, the link uh, correctly. So uh, you will get your certificate in the email. Thank you very much. Uh, if you allow me, Dr. Viam, I would like to express yes, one small uh, special thanks. As I see Dr. Bilhan Tekar from Turkey, he is the radiologist. He is the chief radiologist of Turkey on behalf of Afidea. He is, the, he is with us since the beginning of the webinar. So I am indeed really happy to see him because almost one, one and a half year I didn't see him. So he is, he is a great radiologist as well. Uh, he's a well-known radiologist. So uh, I am indeed happy to, uh, he attend our webinar and uh, I hope he enjoyed as well. Uh, thank you all uh, for your great presentations. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to listen to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Thank, thank you. you very much, Dr. Bahan. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. I guess somebody has to close. So, Dr. Wiam, you have to close then. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be just waiting like oh, this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. And it was a pleasure to see you all and meet you all. Uh, looking forward to have uh, similar uh, webinars in the near future. And hopefully, we can see each other uh, at the University of Sharjah in the very uh, nice uh, campus. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you, Dr. Nasia. Thank you, Dr. Nasia. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>